Hello, and welcome back to the Green Ninja Climate Science Series. In uh, this second video here, we're going to be asking the question, uh, what is the greenhouse effect? So the greenhouse effect is a term that you will often hear uh, associated with uh, global warming and climate change. So it's definitely worth it to take a closer look at what this effect actually is and uh, how it relates to uh, human activities and global warming. So we're not really going to be talking about human activities in this video. We're just going to be talking about uh, the natural greenhouse effect as it existed um, before humans were even around. And uh, so here, going back to our diagram of the Earth's energy budget that we discussed in the last video, we have the Earth down here in the atmosphere, and we talked about how uh, the sun is providing energy coming in to the energy budget. So the sun is kind of like the income term uh, for the family budget. So we have light coming in from the sun, and a portion of that light gets reflected back to space and isn't absorbed at the Earth's surface. So uh, it can be reflected by uh, certain aerosols in the atmosphere or clouds in the atmosphere, and also reflected off of um, things at the surface like ice tend to reflect uh, light back to space very readily. Uh, so this, this reflected uh, radiation is, um, or this reflected light uh, is called uh, albedo, which we'll get into it more in the next video. And then we also showed that um, energy leaving from the Earth's surface, we just called it ultra, or infrared radiation in the last video, um, energy leaving the Earth's surface uh, is the kind of uh, energy out term uh, or the uh, expenditure term if we're talking about the financial budget analogy. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit of complication to this diagram from last time and make it more like reality and show that this energy leaving the Earth's surface doesn't actually escape straight to space. Uh, what happens is it gets uh, absorbed and re-emitted by things like clouds and by things like greenhouse gases that um, essentially absorb it and then they re-emit this infrared radiation in all directions. So a portion of it does still escape to space, but you see that a portion of it is now directed back down towards the Earth's surface. So we have, if it wasn't for these, um, these constituents of the atmosphere that absorb uh, infrared radiation, then this infrared radiation here would just escape straight to space. But because of these um, constituents, we are absorbing uh, this infrared radiation and a portion of it is coming back down towards the Earth's surface. And this is what causes the, this is the natural greenhouse effect of the Earth. And this is what causes the Earth's surface temperature to be warmer than it would be if we didn't have this effect. So uh, to kind of get uh, a better understanding of what's actually going on here, we first have to talk about uh, what is the difference between this energy coming in and this energy uh, leaving. So just uh, a very kind of uh, schematic cartoon here. Uh, the difference between these two things is really the wavelength of radiation. So I've been calling what's coming in from the sun uh, light, but what light really is, it's just um, electromagnetic radiation of a certain wavelength. And we tend to call it uh, kind of just a, short, a shorter wavelength or short wave radiation compared to the Earth. The Earth... Uh, is also emitting electromagnetic radiation just like the sun, but it doesn't emit light because its radiation is at wavelengths that are much longer, which is what is attempted to be sh being shown here in this diagram, is the wavelength of this radiation is much longer than that coming from the sun. And so our eyes are tuned to only be able to see the radiation coming from the sun, so that's why we call that um, light. It just means that we can see it. And even though the radiation or radiation is still coming from the Earth as well, uh, we don't see that because the wavelength is too long for our, our eyes to see. So there's a fundamental difference between the wavelength of the radiation coming in from the sun and leaving from the Earth, which is really important for understanding uh, the greenhouse effect. And the reason this is important is because um, different uh, gases in the Earth's atmosphere absorb different wavelengths of radiation differently. So this is a diagram um, showing an experiment set up by John Tyndall in 1861. And essentially what this experiment uh, does is you shine different wavelengths of light or different wavelengths of radiation 
uh, through different gases, and you kind of see what makes it through to the other side. And so this is um, an example of what you might uh, see from an experiment like this. And so what we're showing here are different gases. These are actually all greenhouse gases. We have water vapor, we have methane, we have carbon dioxide, we have nitrous oxide, and we have ozone. <clears throat> and on the uh, horizontal axis, we have the wavelength of radiation. And on the vertical axis, we have the percent of that radiation that's absorbed when you kind of shine it through um, one of these tubes filled with that gas. And so you can see here with ozone, ozone uh, at about 10 micrometers, uh, so micrometers is a millionth of a meter, so going back to the last diagram, uh, the wavelength isn't really like the size of the Earth or anything like that. It's much, much smaller. That was just uh, attempting to show that the sun emits shortwave radiation and the Earth emits longwave radiation. But uh, this is all considered kind of longer wave radiation that these gases... Uh, are absorbing at. And so ozone here, you can see at about 9 micrometers, uh, absorbs a lot of radiation, and then at different wavelengths it absorbs uh, less radiation. And all these gases uh, absorb differently at different wavelengths. So that is manifested itself in our, in the Earth's atmosphere, as the greenhouse effect. So these greenhouse gases, um, water vapor, clouds, which isn't really a greenhouse gas, but it has a greenhouse effect, uh, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, ozone, and uh, CFCs, all these things are relatively opaque to radiation that the Earth gives off, longer wave radiation, and they're relatively transparent to the radiation that the sun is giving off, or shorter wave radiation. So what that means is they selectively let the radiation come in from the sun, and they selectively block the radiation trying to escape from the surface of the Earth. So what that means is all these things cause the Earth's surface temperature to be warmer than it would be otherwise. And so if we go back to the um, energy or the financial budget analogy, uh, what these greenhouse gases do is they essentially increase uh, the wealth of the family or increase the surface temperature of the Earth by decreasing the spending of the family or decreasing the energy leaving uh, the Earth in infrared radiation. So they let the energy come in, but they don't let it leave as easily as it would like to. And so these percentages are kind of showing the uh, current um, percentage of the Earth's greenhouse effect that are attributable to these different constituents. So 75% comes from water, both in the form of uh, gas and liquid, and then uh, 20% comes from carbon dioxide, and then the remainder is split up among uh, these other greenhouse gases. So uh, not very much of it at all comes from the major uh, constituents of the atmosphere, which are uh, oxygen and nitrogen and uh, argon. So these are all considered trace gases, or they're gases that don't make up a big part of the Earth's atmosphere, but they have a huge effect on the Earth's temperature because they selectively don't allow uh, infrared radiation to leave while allowing shortwave radiation to come in. So, um, just another point here that this is not really how a greenhouse works. Um, a greenhouse works by like physically trapping warm air close to the surface when normally the warm air would want to rise and uh, through convection uh, leave uh, that surface. But we can still use the greenhouse get the greenhouse as an analogy for the greenhouse effect because uh, the warming of the air in the greenhouse is because you are inhibiting energy out. So that's the main point here is that um, the most intuitive way to get an increase in temperature would be by increasing energy in, but we can also get an increase in temperature by decreasing energy out or decreasing spending in our family budget analogy. So just one more uh, analogy with that, we can think of a skier or someone out in the cold uh, and they put on all this uh, heavy winter clothing and so they are warmer than they would be otherwise without this, this clothing on. And you can ask, well, why are they warmer than they, than they would be otherwise? It's not because they've increased the energy coming into their body. Um, it's because they've decreased the energy going out. So this is what a greenhouse does, and it's what the greenhouse effect does as well. You increase your temperature by decreasing what you're, what you're giving off to your environment. 
And uh, that is essentially how the greenhouse effect works and why the greenhouse effect is important uh, for current uh, issues regarding climate change, which we will get into more in the coming videos.